The following is a production of New Mexico State University. This morning, environment department officials shut down operations here at La Otra Vida Foods after food poisoning was traced back to pickled jalapeno peppers packaged and distributed by the company. So far, five people remain hospitalized, while 35 have been treated and released. Foodborne illnesses are bad news for consumers, for small food processors, and for health authorities. An estimated 9,000 deaths each year in the United States can be attributed to contaminated food. In addition, tens of millions of episodes of illness result from foodborne pathogens. When our safety net fails and illness results, consumer confidence in our food system erodes, and the effect on the food industry can be far-reaching. I have two responsibilities as a New Mexico food producer and processor, and particularly because I'm small, I have concerns about my consumer. I want a product on the market that's safe, something that they have confidence in, and something that will remain for a long time. I also feel another um, responsibility to my colleagues. Uh, New Mexico puts out many products, and I don't know if our consumers always can differentiate between my product and someone else's, and if mine has to be recalled, then I think it's going to reflect all of New Mexico products, which is going to hurt the industry. There's nothing worse for business than to produce an unsafe food product that has injured and perhaps even killed someone. When I receive a letter from another state that indicates that they have embargoed a product, it means that we have all failed in our responsibility to protect the consumer and our responsibility in food safety. It also means that public confidence is lost in all New Mexico food products. Southwestern foods have grown in popularity in recent years, providing opportunities for many small-scale operators to produce, process, and market a variety of regional favorites. Those who have taken advantage of the increased opportunity know that with it comes the responsibility of producing a product that is safe for the consumer. There's a number of issues that can occur when you scale up from a ma and pa operation of a local or home produced food to something that is then commercially distributed. And uh, again, it's, uh, it happens fairly commonly. Somebody's got a good barbecue sauce or a good salsa or a, a good recipe for this or that. And a lot of people say, well, why don't you fix it and sell it to a lot of people? Uh, certainly this is uh, nothing that the health department or the environment department is opposed to. But we need to keep in mind that when one makes a shift to commercial food production, that the person responsible for that food production needs to be very careful about how they prepare that food and how they store it to avoid the, the problem of food contamination or producing a product that might make several people sick or in a worst case scenario, even kill people. While recipes and food processing procedures will vary from product to product, small food processors share basic safety practices. For example, it's plain common sense to make sure that those who work in your food operation take care that foreign objects like hair, jewelry, and buttons don't find their way into your product, that employees wash their hands frequently for at least 20 seconds, that work surfaces are kept clean and sanitized, that cleaning chemicals and pesticides are stored where they don't come in contact with and contaminate food, and that food handlers use disposable towels and gloves to reduce the risk of cross-contamination. Many Southwestern specialty foods, such as salsas and pickles, must be acidified to ensure their safety. While recipes may differ, processors of these specialty items must be sure that the correct amount of acid is added to their products to reduce the risk of spreading foodborne illness. Common sense is the key to food safety, and it is the underlying philosophy of an important food safety program that, followed step by step, will help ensure that a safe product leaves your food processing operation. This program is called HACCP, for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points. HACCP was developed by the Pillsbury Company and NASA in the 1960s to provide safe foods for astronauts in the space program. 
Since then, this safety program has been adopted by many large and small food businesses with great success. Developing a HACCP program for your business requires seven steps. One, identify hazards. Two, identify critical control points. Three, establish critical limits. Four, establish monitoring procedures. Five, establish corrective action. Six, verify that the system is working. And seven, establish a record keeping system. There are experienced people in the environment department the Health Department, and the Cooperative Extension Service who can help you get started on a HACCP plan. Those people can put you in touch with a food processing professional to review your plan and give you an official OK. HACCP is a series of steps that helps us catch our mistakes before they happen. I find it very beneficial, particularly in a small company like ours. The cost of HACCP is actually minimal when you consider the benefits that's derived from these steps. And that is happy consumers, and one is able to remain in business for a long time because of the checkpoints. I leave at night my processing plant, and I can sleep. Let's look more closely at how a small food processing operation might set up a HACCP program. First, it is useful to make a recipe or process flowchart, a step-by-step -step description of how your product is made, from receiving the raw ingredients through processing and storing the finished product. Write your ingredients at the top of your worksheet. Then, note what happens to each ingredient. Include inspection at time of delivery, any chopping or grinding, weighing or measuring, mixing, cooking, and packaging. When you're sure that you've included every step in your process, you're ready to begin the seven steps of the HACCP plan by first identifying food-related hazards. What factors may make food unsafe for consumption? Biological hazards, bacteria, molds, viruses, or parasites cause illnesses like botulism, salmonellosis, and listeriosis. Fresh and processed ingredients must be carefully monitored to eliminate biological risks. Chemical hazards occur where foods could be contaminated with pesticides or where they might come in contact with cleaning compounds or sanitizing chemicals. Physical hazards include any foreign objects that could cause serious harm to consumers, such as glass chips from jars or bottles. Once you have identified all the hazards in your recipe or process, you are ready to identify critical control points. These are steps in your operation where the health risk to the consumer is the greatest. These are the points at which you need to put controls in place to prevent, reduce, or eliminate a hazard. For example, in foods such as peppers or tomatoes, spores of Clostridium botulinum can grow and produce a deadly toxin. Adding an acid such as vinegar or lemon juice is necessary to prevent spore growth. This acid treatment is therefore a critical control point. Without it, the food, when consumed, could trigger an outbreak of botulism. If your product requires heat processing, the heat treatment may be a critical control point you must check with a process authority for the correct time and temperature for your particular product. When you review your process flowchart, ask yourself, is this step specifically designed to eliminate a hazard or reduce a risk to an acceptable level? If the answer is yes, and if no subsequent step in the process will reduce or eliminate the hazard, then it is a critical control point. The amount of spices I add to my product is not a matter of safety. It's only a concern for continuity of flavor for myself and my customers. When I work with my acid, which is my vinegar, this is a critical control point, and this is necessary for safety. After identifying your critical control points, you must decide what criteria must be met to make sure that each hazard is adequately controlled. These criteria are called critical limits. They most likely include cooking or refrigeration temperatures and pH or acid levels. Because these limits are critical to the safety of your product, you'll want to consult with a food processing professional to determine critical limits for your particular product. How do you know that you are meeting your critical limits? At each critical control point, for each critical limit, you will develop a systematic monitoring procedure. Some of your monitoring may involve only visual inspection. 
Do any of your canning jars have chips in the rims that would prevent them from sealing properly? Others may require the use of simple instrumentation, such as a thermometer and timer, to ensure that foods are cooked at the correct temperature for the correct time period. Or a pH meter to check that the pH of acidified foods is 4.2 or lower. To make sure that your monitoring is accurate, you will want to verify periodically that your instruments are working correctly. Reputable manufacturers can instruct you about the correct procedure for verification and recalibration should it be necessary. As you regularly monitor your processing operation, you'll also record the results. By maintaining a continuous log of cooking times, temperatures, acid levels, and other evidence that you have not exceeded critical limits, you can document that each batch or lot produced is safely produced. Occasionally, something may go wrong in your operation. Perhaps a heating element fails, and the product isn't treated at the proper temperature. What if the pH level is not low enough? What do you do to correct these problems? When you write your HACCP plan, you'll consult with a food processing professional to develop a plan to follow should a problem occur at a critical control point. With a HACCP program, you or a designated employee will know in advance exactly what to do to put production safely back on track. Identify, control, monitor, correct. Constant vigilance is key to safely processed food products and to an effective HACCP program. Verification should include review of your HACCP plan by an outside source. Internal verification includes regular review of processing records and periodic calibration of measuring instruments. As a regulator of food processors in New Mexico, I have found that we enjoy working with those processing plants which have HACCP plans in place and in operation. Reason being that HACCP is a very proactive system. It essentially finds problems before they exist, before they happen. As a regulator, I work with the managers and owners of food processing plants as a partner. And I go in there and check their records and watch their process and verify that each step of the plan is in fact being followed and is being followed correctly. Food that comes out of these plants is safer than traditional methods. And we find that this is a recipe for success. The final step in establishing your HACCP program is your record keeping system. Whether your files are kept in notebooks or in file cabinets, they provide important documentation that your product was safely produced. The records that you made while monitoring for critical limits at critical control points should be kept in a permanent record keeping system after each batch or product lot has been processed. It is important to identify each batch with a batch code or lot number. This provides you with an additional safety net. Should a question arise about the safety of one of your products, you will be able to immediately identify and recall the affected products. As an FDA investigator, I spend a lot of time on the road. My job is consumer protection. However, it's always a pleasure to inspect a firm that has a HACCP plan in place because this indicates to me that the firm is truly interested in producing a good, clean product and protecting their customers. A HACCP program can spell success for small food processing businesses. It increases the safety of your food products, increases consumer confidence, and ensures that you can get back on track quickly if something does go wrong. To get started, call your state or local health or environment department and tell an official that you're interested in starting a HACCP program. Information is also available from the Cooperative Extension Service. The Department of Agriculture reported today that New Mexico food products are selling well throughout the state and nationwide as well. They credit the increase in sales of value-added agricultural products not only to their enchanting taste, but also to the strong safety record of the many small food processors in the state of New Mexico. HACCP. It's good news for consumers 
and good news for your small food processing business. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.